Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgcave.com and today we are going to learn about the chamfer modifier, one of the uh, modifiers that I use uh, the most I guess in 3ds Max while modeling. I think you already know what this modifier does because we uh, went over this a few times but uh, this time I want to uh, take a more in-depth look, more uh, close look, a closer look to this modifier. So uh, let's create a box. Uh, let's set the dimensions to 50 by 50 by 20. And let's move this to the origin. And now I want to assign a chamfer modifier on top. And right here you can see that we have a softer looking box. Uh, let's hide the uh, chamfer modifier and see th uh, the effect. The first thing that we see is the corners of course, but I want you to uh, look at the faces as well. You can see that we have a gradient uh, on the surface, which means that, uh, which suggests that this surface is a little bit uh, concave, but it's not, we know that it's not because we uh, just assigned this over a box, so they should be just flat. Uh, but what chamfer does is uh, it automatically smooths, let's make this a little bit bigger, it automatically smooths the object uh, in here. And you can see that uh, the smoothing output uh, box in here. And uh, if you choose smooth chamfers only, then you will see that the surfaces remain flat. There's no right choice in here. Uh, this will differ according to the object we are trying to model. If we have a more concave lo looking surface, uh, then we will leave this on. But if we are modeling a uh, flat faced object, then we will uh, turn this to, to smooth chamfers only. Uh, you can also choose a threshold for this as well. This is the angle threshold between the faces. Uh, if you increase this, uh, it will have a better chance to smooth all the surfaces. Uh, if you decrease this, uh, you will see that it slowly rules out the faces that has uh, 15 or less uh, angle between them. Okay, so let's leave this at 30. Uh, let's focus on the real reason we use uh, chamfer. The real reason is uh, we uh, want to smooth the corners of the object cell. If we hit F4 to get rid of the edges, you can see that we have a flat cartoony looking line on the corner of the box. But if you enable the chamfer, it still uh, has this. Let's play with some values and change that. Uh, I can increase the segments and right away you can see that it will uh, go away. And let's decrease the uh, chamfer amount a little bit because I want to show this to you. Uh, now we have a smoother transition between the faces and also we have a fillet uh, in the corner which can actually gather the light and uh, it will show. Let me show you what this looks like in render. Okay, it's uh, it's uh, exciting. We, I'm, I'm going to use corner render. You don't need to know this, uh, know how to use this. You don't need to repeat this. I just want to show you how this affects the render. Okay. So let's put a light uh, in here. I'm, I put it a light in here. So I want to see it reflects off this corner edge in here. And let's assign a corona render material. I'm going to right click materials corona, corona material and assign this to the object. And I'm going to double click on the object and increase the reflection value, decrease the glow sensor a little bit. You don't need to know what these are, but of course, the, as the name suggests, reflection will introduce some reflection to the object. And if I hit render, real-time render on this button, you will see that in the corner we have a reflection caught by that fillet. And if I disable this, you can see that we have no reflection. So this looks much more realistic than this, okay? This is the reason we use chamfer. Let's uh, dim the light a little bit. And you can see that we have a nice reflection on the corner, okay? Okay, this image is the one I use uh, the most, I guess, when I'm trying to explain this concept. But it, this is not a very, like, uh, super uh, photorealistic render, but whatever. I, want, I just want to show that, uh, look at the difference between these two images. The only difference is the fillet in the corners, and this looks like, uh, I guess, four or five times more realistic than this one, right? This one is not that realistic at all. At least this uh, gets close to... Uh, what we are looking for, right? So uh, please always, always, always introduce fillets or chamfers on the edges uh, of your objects. This will make them look much more realistic. And this modifier does it very good. As you can see, there are a lot of options in here. We 
uh, played with the smooth options. We played with the chamfer options, which is uh, which controls the amount, as you can see, and uh, segments on the corners. What segments does is it uh, introduces more segments to the corners, as you can see, and it, it's a little bit more smooth at the edges, at least. And you can uh, play with different things, like depth uh, makes it this uh, look more like a chamfer, like this, or you can make it inward, uh, convex, I guess, and concave from here. Uh, I usually leave this at 0.5. You can uh, you can play with the rest of the options. I'm not going to go through all of them. I, I'm, I'm not designing these lessons to just go by uh, box by box and do tell you what each box does because I guess that's nonsense. Uh, let's try to understand what these concepts are for, are there for. Uh, so I want to show you some other thing that will uh, make you understand this a little bit better in my opinion. Now, the next lesson, next three lessons, we are going to model this coffee table uh, in here. And uh, I'm going to show you how to go through each step and create this from scratch. But I just want to show you in this lesson, I just want to show you uh, the importance to show you the importance of the chamfer modifier. I just want to model this part, this portion, okay, just with boxes. Uh, let me show what I mean. I'm going to go to the front view, choose the box uh, object. And I'm going to just create a box with the dimensions of 40 by 100 by 10. Uh, let's uh, keep it at uh, the height at four, okay? And I'm going to move this to the origin. Now let's say this is our uh, drawer, and I want to just create the frame around it. I want to copy this box, holding Shift. Uh, let's create uh, one with ten centimeters. And let's assume there are boxes here. I want to change the width to nine and the length to 60 move it in here uh, you can use snaps of course uh, always i can hit s and move it here move this one in here and i can just copy this with shift again and let's grab this as well okay now we have something like this and as you can see even though we have a lot of boxes a lot of objects in here uh, when you render this, or when you look at it like this, you can't see any little lines between the boxes because they just snap at each other and snap uh, the position are snapped, so they are just exactly uh, vertex by vertex touching each other, and this never happens in real life. Okay, so if you introduce some chamfer to all of these boxes, you can right away see uh, a more detailed object, more nuanced object. Uh, in the viewport, right? Uh, even though if I change the smooth option to smooth chamfers only, uh, you again see these little um, in-between lines of the objects, right? And this is what makes our renders look much more realistic. Even if I lower the chamfer threshold, you can again see that we have these lines between the objects. This is very important. Please never ever, actually, if I was modeling this for a client, I would even put some distance between the objects myself, like this. Uh, you, you will see that this looks much more realistic than this uh, in here, okay? And these, of course, look much more realistic than this, because this is just a cartoony object. Okay, so please use this chamfer modifier very wisely. Uh, it's very useful. Uh, it's a very useful tool in your toolbox. Uh, so. You will uh, understand this a little bit better when we uh, model this coffee table in the next three lessons. Uh, so see you in the next lessons. Uh, if you find this lesson useful, uh, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, or hit the, and hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.